Hey guys, you're in the studio once again with Luke from GuitarIQ.com. I get a whole lot of questions from you guys and I know that there's a lot of people out there looking for simple ways to get more out of your guitar tone in the mix. So in today's video, I'll be checking out a great little tip for using your amp simulator to get bigger, wider sounding guitar tracks without taking up a whole lot of space in the mix. This is really simple to do regardless of the software you're using, so let's jump in and take a look. I'll be using this video as an opportunity to test out a nice little plugin by the guys over at Softube called Vintage Amp Room. This has been out for a while now, but it's still a great sounding option, especially if you're looking for those classic amp tones. Uh, it's very easy to use. There's only three options we have to choose from, which is part of what I really like about this plugin. So let's firstly take a listen to the track. I've dialed in a few different tones to choose from. It's pretty obvious the type of amps each of these options are modeled on. So let's check out how this sounds. Straight away, I'm liking the options I have to work with here, which is always a good way to start. As I mentioned though, I'm looking for an easy way to get a bigger, wider sounding guitar tone. I could try double tracking this part, which is a very popular technique. That might not always be what the track needs though. So in this instance, I'm just wanting to stick with using a single guitar part. This technique is very simple. If I just come up to this secondary track here and unpack that, you can see essentially what I've done is just duplicate the original track we had, keeping the same plug-in settings, but panning one side left and one side right. Be mindful that if you are duplicating tracks like this, you want to make sure that everything's properly aligned or you might start getting some weird phasing issues. If I was to press play at this point, things would still basically sound like a mono signal. So the trick is to change up the information that I'm hearing from either side. For this example, I'll be choosing a Marshall style tone for the left side and then a Vox style sound on the right. So let's take a listen to how this sounds. As you can hear now, that's really pushing the guitar tone out to the sides and it's giving us a nice blend of a couple of different amps. When I'm thinking about creating a bigger sounding guitar tone, I'm not just wanting to think in terms of width, I'm also wanting to think a little bit about depth. So the last very simple thing I want to try is adding a touch more space around these guitars. To do this, I'll be running both channels into one of Softube's true stereo algorithmic reverbs. I quite like this little plugin, but you could essentially use anything that's going to model the sound of a small room. Logic Space Designer would be another option, for example. And I'm just using this to add a touch more thickness and depth to those guitars. So let's listen again and compare what we have now with the mono track we had originally. Hopefully that was able to help you out. I really like how this technique can make your guitar tone sound bigger, but in a way that pushes things out to the sides and leaves plenty of space in the middle for your main melodic content like your vocals or your lead guitar. Obviously you could experiment a lot with this idea regardless of the different plugins that you're using. 
The more contrast you have between the left and right channels, the wider that stereo image is going to appear. But you just want to make sure that the tone also sounds good in mono, that both channels are complementing each other and there's no unintentional phasing issues going on. And hopefully you can come up with something that you really like. So try that one out on your next project and let me know what you think. Well that's it for this video, as always feel free to leave your comments below and if this has helped you out then let me know about it by clicking on the like button. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this if you haven't already and also make sure to head over to the website guitariq.com for a whole lot more content over there including free videos, books and articles. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.